Heinz Field may be empty now, but players will be out on the gridiron again soon. No pilgrimage to La Trobe and St. Vincent College this season, but the Steelers will be preparing at the confluence. We break it all down for you up next on Steelers Training Camp 2020. It's Steelers Training Camp 2020, presented by FedEx. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the first of our Steeler training camp specials. I'm Bob Pompiani, and while we know there will be no preseason games this season, training camps will take on even greater importance as teams ramp up their preparations for the regular season. But this training camp will be like no other, as all of the activities will be at Heinz Field for the first time ever. No fans will be allowed in. They will start with 80-man rosters, which will eventually be trimmed to 53. Everyone will get daily COVID-19 tests for the first couple of weeks. And then the ramp-up period begins on August the 6th. Following that, it's padded practices, which will be the only contact since, again, there are no preseason games. Earlier this week, training camp began, but not at St. Vincent College, as I said. Instead, they started to arrive one by one at Heinz Field to different times to get their locker room assignments over there. It's the first time they've ever done this, such as life in a sports pandemic. Rich Walsh has more on their arrivals. Rich. Thanks, Bob. The Steelers camp will be unlike the rest, taking place from the North Shore instead of Latrobe. Players reported as early as Sunday, and really, other than COVID testing, the rookies have been out there on the field going through drills. Coach Tomlin had a stern but important health message for his players earlier this week. You message it thoughtfully. You use catchphrases, and you guys know I like catchphrases, but what you're talking about is conduct that is detrimental. And that's a term that's used often in our business and appropriately so, uh, because in this COVID environment, if you're not exercising discretion and being thoughtful about how you move, that conduct is detrimental to your cause and to ours collectively. And so that's the messaging that I'm delivering to those guys. Well, it's going to be a while until we see a full padded practice, but if the team follows Tomlin's message, the Steelers will have that much of a better chance for a playoff run. Bob? All right, Rich, thanks. And this has been an unprecedented season for everyone in sports, and the NFL has been forced to change up plans for training camp sites. For the Steelers, it's been St. Vincent College in La Trobe. Think about it, since 1967, but not this year due to the pandemic. Training camp will be at Heinz Field. Missy Matthews of Steelers.com shows us what it will look like over there. It's been a quiet summer at the UPMC Rooney Sports Complex. The activity at the Pittsburgh Steelers headquarters has been greatly reduced as COVID-19 restrictions are in place. But across town, the silence has ended. Over the last three months, the team has been moving tons of equipment for training camp. This year, instead of the hour-long trip to St. Vincent College, the Steelers' move was only about a 10-minute drive from team headquarters. In terms of planning for camp, we are, you know, faced with some new challenges, man. We're, we're doing training camp at Heinz Field. Uh, and as we got through March, uh, things didn't get any better. Sitting down with ownership and coach, um, we came up with the idea and we looked at a lot of sites, but hey, let's just do training camp at Heinz Field. Through all of the preparation and changes that come with holding training camp at Heinz Field, safety remains at the top of everyone's agenda. To keep our players safe, players and coaches, the NFL has put together an extensive protocol. This protocol and using common sense, social distancing, wearing a face mask, washing your hands frequently, using alcohol-based hand sanitizer, and not coming to work sick. These are things that even though we have many, many protocols, cleaning protocols, the most important things are the things that we do in our daily lives to protect yourself from COVID-19. Cleaning has always been a priority for me and my staff, but now it's just the frequency of it, you know? We are cleaning every day, numerous times a day, and especially with laundry, um, we have added disinfectants in the wash and the softener and detergent, so it's just going to be an all-day cleaning event. From day one, they've been deep cleaning the building on a routine basis. We have sanitizing stations throughout the building. We have proper signage everywhere. We've also changed everything in the building to touchless. All the, the restrooms and wash facilities, touchless. The NFL has purchased 
contact tracing devices. GPS tracking device, staff, coaches, players uh, will be wearing it. If anybody contacts them within six feet, it will register that individual has contacted them, how long they've contacted, and how many times that day they've been in contact with that person. So should we have an issue where someone is COVID-19 positive, we can trace that individual. One of the ways you can wear the GPS while you're practicing, this is a wristband, it has a pocket here. You just slide that GPS in and put it on and good to go. Thank you very much, Missy. Pretty extensive stuff, as you can see. And Camping at Home is the first episode of the Steelers' new series. They call it The Standard. Watch the entire episode on Steelers.com and Steelers social media pages. When we continue with Steelers Training Camp 2020, we're going to take a closer look at what virtual life means in the business of the NFL. That's next right here as we continue on KDKA TV. Welcome back to Steelers Training Camp 2020, presented by FedEx. You know, last year's high hopes were quickly dashed with the loss of their franchise quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, but Pittsburgh overcame that adversity to take an 8-5 and five record into their final three games. Rich Walsh takes a look back at the 2019 season. Rich. All right, Bob, the Steelers had a major uphill battle to maintain a competitive record in 2019. Some young players stepped up to fill the voids, while a trade acquisition solidified a stacked defense. Let's look back at the good and the bad from last season. The 2019 Steelers season was filled with ups and downs. Week one left a bad taste in the mouth of Steelers Nation with a whipping by the reigning champs. And wide, wide open, Philip Dorsett. Big night for him. Week two led to more issues as the face of the franchise was lost for the year with a major elbow injury. And for the injured Ben Roethlisberger, it is Mason Rudolph. And after starting the season 0-2, it was time to head west, where a new, recently acquired star emerged. Pass is going to be intercepted again at the 25. It's Minka Fitzpatrick. But the Niners also had a few playmakers. The ball came out. Who has it? 49ers, 49ers have it. The Steelers changed the tone in prime time as the defense turned it up a notch against the Bengals. Big rush, he's hit, and the ball is out, and the Steelers have it. T.J. Watt has it on the sack and stripped by Bud Dupree. An intense battle against the Ravens, yet another QB went down. Oh, man, it looks like he's oh. out. Oh, my. It looks like he's out. Earl Thomas made the hit. He's been hit with a personal foul. The Steelers took their rival to OT, but once more, the offense could not hold on. Just caught on a dead run. Who has the football? The Ravens. The Ravens dive on it. I feel terrible, man. It's, uh, it's literally the worst one ever. The Steelers needed a spark, and they found it on the road with a man named Duck. Throws it to the right flank. Slipping a tackle is Carter up the sideline. 10-5. The guys kept the momentum going, especially on defense. Tipped out of the air and intercepted. It is Minka Fitzpatrick, the former Dolphin. Minka Fitzpatrick worked with Joe Hayden and Steven Nelson to become one of the more dominant secondaries in the league. The team charged back into contention with four straight wins. With some time here, down the sideline, overthrown and intercepted. But the injury bug would not end there. Stars had targets on their backs in the first matchup against Cleveland, then the unthinkable happened. Y'all seen exactly what happened. That's, that's, no, that ain't a part of football. Y'all been, been reporting for a long time. Y'all never even seen that. It's bigger than football. It's protection. Is that almost like a weapon? I mean, hell, you could have killed him. Total coward move on his part. You know, I, I, I mean, it's, it's okay, though. Pittsburgh bounced back with three straight victories to keep playoff hopes alive. Throws it long down the sideline, and there's a man under it. And it's caught! It's caught with a marker down. That's a touchdown for James Washington. All the team needed to do was win one of the last three games to be postseason bound. But it just wasn't in the cards. Wants to throw. He's back. And he throws the pass, and it's intercepted. After like the first loss, I mean, you know, how you respond is going to define kind of who I am. It's been ugly. We just didn't execute well the last couple weeks. We just didn't execute. Shouldn't sit well. You know, we finished eight and eight. Didn't make the playoffs. Going home early January is not something you want to be doing, and uh, that's where we are right now. 
Well, the offense lacked production with Big Ben out of the lineup and injuries to guys like Juju and James Conner. The defense led the way. And as you can see, finished in the top five in some major categories, including first in takeaways per game. Now, with minimal losses in defensive personnel, look for that unit to lead the way once again, except this time they should have a future Hall of Famer quarterback on the other side. Bob? Oh, I like that combination. I think it bodes well. Thank you, Rich. And while other sports were either in the middle or the beginning of their seasons when this pandemic hit, the NFL was not. But they still had plenty to do in an offseason, which suddenly had to be done completely virtually. But the league did not miss a beat, as Missy Matthews of Steelers.com shows us. Let's get down to business, man. It's 11 o'clock. I'm excited to be on with you guys this morning. As usual, a couple ground rules, man. Uh, if you're not speaking, put your devices on mute uh, so that we cut down on all the background noise so that we can maximize our opportunity to communicate. Like the rest of the world, the Pittsburgh Steelers have had to adapt to life during a pandemic. Following strict rules provided by the NFL, the team has taken measures to virtually prepare players for an upcoming season. Uh, this is an unusual and challenging environment in terms of uh, this pandemic we face. Let's spend time talking about ways that we can circumvent it. Let's talk about ways in which the circumstances change our environment, our planning, and preparation. You know, we come together this time of year, we're laying a foundation for the things that we think are going to be important to us. Physical conditioning that precedes all other discussions. If you're not in great shape, we can't get the things accomplished that we want to get accomplished. So we've been talking about training, how it applies to you in training, because we're training remotely. Man, you got to acknowledge that the environment is going to be different and the process is going to be different. And you got to acknowledge it. You got to be light on your feet. You got to be big time prepared, physically and mentally. Without normal OTAs or group workouts, players are training in different ways to prepare their bodies for an NFL season. So we're working on offensive line position work and uh, skill work, individual work and things like that. Working on my kick set, uh, reach block, what we're doing, our punch, timing the punch, everything like that. For me, it was trying to figure out what's, what's the best way to, you know, continuously be you or do things that is going to make me better. Having to spend more money on myself this year than 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 normal. You know, all the gyms were closed. My my gym I go to, they, you know, shut down immediately. I mean, I had to be very creative with the workouts, you know. You know, it was a grind, but you know what? I appreciate it. You know, we got through it and, you know, I'm just glad to be back at the gym. Like anyone else, football players also need time to unwind, relax, and enjoy some non-football activities. If I could professionally golf, I would. Like, I love it. It's so challenging. It's so much fun to, to go out there and test your yourself every day. Last year, true story, I was top 500 ranked in FIFA Ultimate Team. I am no longer in the top 500 in FIFA 20 this year. That hurts. But I'll beat anybody watching this. Even though the Steelers return a team that has veterans on both sides of the ball, there are always great position battles to watch inside of every training camp, and this year is no exception. So we start with a breakdown of the offense. With most of the starters returning from last year, the 2020 Steelers offense will look pretty much like the 2019 version with one obvious difference. Ben Roethlisberger under center. Mason Rudolph returns as the number two QB, but there could be competition for the third spot between Devlin Hodges, former first round pick Paxton Lynch, and Ohio State standout JT Barrett. At running back, James Conner returns as the starter and will once again be backed up by Benny Snell and Jalen Samuels. Fourth round pick rookie Anthony McFarlane will likely make the roster, especially if he ends up returning punts and kicks. That leaves Trey Edmonds and Kareth White battling for a fifth and final spot. The Steelers' top draft pick Chase Claypool will certainly make the roster, but he might only see the field in four wide receiver sets as Juju Smith-Schuster, Deontay Johnson, and James Washington all return. Battling to make the roster behind those four would be Ryan Switzer, 
Deion Kane, and two players with local ties. Former Pitt Panther Quadri Henderson and Penn State product Saeed Blacknow. The team will also carry three tight ends, newly acquired Eric Ebron, Vance McDonald, and Zach Gentry. Now the only question of who starts where will come at offensive line. The retirement of Ramon Foster leaves a hole at left guard, which could be filled by newcomer Steven Wisniewski, but there has been talk of moving tackle Matt Filer into that spot, which would open up competition between Zach Banner and Chooks Okorafor at right tackle. All right, so this is a veteran offensive unit that does not have many changes. Ben Roethlisberger is back after surgery, hoping for a long and productive season. Eric Ebron slated to be that big tight end target. The O-line, a veteran unit, at least to start from left to right. Villanueva, Filer, Pouncey, DeCastro, and either Banner or Chooks Okorafor. For more on some of the more interesting offensive questions heading into this regular season, let's go back to Rich Walsh, this time joined by the Post-Gazette's Cherry Dulac. All right, thanks, Bob. The Steelers do seem to have a crowded offensive meeting room now. Jerry, the Steelers added a few weapons this offseason. Eric Ebron, Chase Claypool. Who do you see getting the majority of reps at tight end and wide receiver? Well, I think Vance McDonald is still going to be their number one tight end. But, uh, Rich, if you look back to last year, there, the number of multiple tight end sets that they used were way down from previous years. You know, getting Ebron is going to be, it, it allows them to do what they used to be able to do with two tight ends, except now you have a productive big time player. Certainly when you look at his pedigree, we'll see what happens going forward. But on paper, you added a, a productive type of tight end. Jerry, I worry about the rookies getting caught up. So do you think any of the three offensive draft picks, Claypool, McFarland, Kevin Dotson will make an impact this year. You know, I think it's going to be hard for them, Rich, like I said earlier in the show, um, because they've been unable to be on the field. So there's going to be limited opportunities for young guys. Look, they're going to want to get Chase Claypool on the field. He's their number one pick. They didn't bring him in to, uh, to sit on the bench. You will see him in there in some limited packages. I don't see any of those rookies you know, fingers crossed, of course, but I don't see any of them making a big impact this year. All right, thanks, Jerry. I want to check in with you one more time and hear your thoughts about the defense. You got it, Rich. All right, guys, thanks. And when we come back, how does one of the best defenses in the NFL get better? We have some answers. This defense never rests. That is coming up next when we continue with Steelers Training Camp 2020. Welcome back to Steelers Training Camp 2020, presented by FedEx. Welcome back, everyone. You know, the biggest reason why the Steelers almost got into the playoffs after the loss of Ben Roethlisberger was the defense. It put up some of the best numbers in franchise history. Let's take a look at how good this D can be in 2020. Steelers' highly rated defense returns most of their starters from last year's unit and appears to be in position for another terrific season. The only key contributor lost this offseason was nose tackle Javon Hargrave, who left via free agency. Either Tyson Alualu or former Raven Chris Wormley will step in for Hargrave and be joined up front by a healthy Stefan Tuitt and always consistent Cam Hayward. An outside linebacker, the dynamic duo of T.J. Watt and Bud Dupree are back as starters, but depth could be an issue. Third round pick Alex Highsmith has steep learning curve ahead of him, while Ola Adani and Tuzar Skipper have very limited NFL experience. Devin Bush shined as a rookie and will partner with Vince Williams to anchor the middle linebacker spots, but much like the outside, there is little depth on the inside. After the departure of Mark Barron and Tyler Matakevich, the only middle backers on the roster with any NFL experience are Ulysses Gilbert and Robert Spillane. Finally, defensive backfield, which was long a weakness for this team, has now become a strength. Joe Hayden and Steven Nelson will start at each cornerback position, while Minka Fitzpatrick and Terrell Edmonds return at free and strong safety. Mike Hilton, Justin Lane, and Cam Sutton provide solid depth in the nickel and dime looks. So Chris Wormley replaces Javon Hargrave at the nose. The rest of the D-line, outstanding. 
Hayward, Tewitt, back from injury. Backers inside include Bush and Williams. Outside, Watt, Dupree, 26 sacks combined last year. The secondary returns in full with Hayden, Nelson on the outside, Fitzpatrick and Edmonds over the top. You know, the loss of Javon Hargrave will hurt, no doubt, but with a healthy Stephon Tewitt coming back, this will be a defense that returns 10 of 11 starters. That's unheard of in this salary cap era. With more on that, let's go back over to Rich and Jerry D. All right, thanks, Bob. Steelers fans are definitely looking forward to seeing this year's defense wreck havoc. Once again, Jerry, they have almost all their key players back from last year, but are you concerned at all about depth, especially at linebacker and safety? Well, I think what you're going to see happen uh, is uh, safety, yes, uh, to a degree. You know, they drafted Antoine Brooks on the sixth round out of Maryland. But at linebacker, I think the plan is right now, Vince Williams is going to be their other inside linebacker, I would venture to say 70 to 80 percent of the time. So that's kind of how they're going to look at that position. But, Rich, we have seen in the past when they play passing teams, Vince Williams kind of gets – uh, out athletic, if you will, in past situations. And so, you know, that's something they're going to have, they will look at going forward. But that's the way they're going to start right now. Finally, it's safe to say the Minka Fitzpatrick trade was a home <laughs> run. It's worked out great. How much do you think he means to this defense, and how do you expect the Steelers to utilize them this year? Well, conceptually, Rich, I think you'd like to see them, uh, I mean, I think they would like to see uh, him be able to do a little more. I don't think you're going to see Troy Polamalu type stuff from Minka Fitzpatrick. I don't think you're going to see him get a free pass to roam the field. So I don't know that you'll see a whole lot different. After all, it was pretty good what we saw last year from him. Yes, it was. All right, Jerry. Thanks a lot. I appreciate the time. All right, Rich. All right, guys. Thank you. Coming up next, Rich and I will have our Steeler pay player picks to watch for the season. So keep it right here as Steelers Training Camp 2020 preview continues. Welcome back to Steelers Training Camp 2020, presented by FedEx. You know, every year we look at players who might be able to provide unexpected production. There are always stories of players who take big steps from year one to year two or suddenly explode with career statistics. So here are our players to watch. I'm going to focus on the offensive line with the retirement of Ramon Foster. Matt Filer moves over there, which leaves right tackle a two-man battle. Zach Banner was acquired, but Chuksa Korafor was a drafted player who really was somebody the Steelers liked. Last year, he lost out to Banner, but the team would love him to reach that potential this year, Rich. Bob, my player to watch has to be Deontay Johnson, who not only provided a spark on special teams, but also proved to be a solid receiving target last season. Look for him to take a bigger role this year. All right. You know the Steelers have high hopes for 2020. We hope you enjoyed the first of our training camp specials presented by FedEx. For Rich Walsh, Jerry Dulac, Missy Matthews, and our terrific sports staff, I'm Bob Pompiani. Thanks for watching, and we will see you again next week.